Welcome, and thank you for viewing Truth in Christ broadcast. This program was designed with you in mind to inform, edify, and strengthen you and build you up in the word of the Lord. So I want you to join me as we examine God's word this, today. And I've chosen as a lesson title from the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7, Control it or it will control you. Control it or it will control you. And I want you to see what, I'm, what it is referring to in the verse. God is speaking to Cain and he said, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door it desire to have you, but you must master it. And so from that statement, but you must master it, is where the lesson title is taken from. In the King James, he said, rule it, rule over it, or him. All right. And so we, we want to examine the text. I believe that the story of Cain and Abel is remembered for the wrong reason. Yes, it is a, a fact that it is the first murder committed in the history of mankind. And so everyone remember Cain killing Abel. But what was the circumstances? surrounding that murder? What was the circumstances surrounding Cain's anger? And so I want us to examine the circumstances. I want us to, to, to look carefully at God's warning to Cain. And then we were going to look at that statement master it or control it or it will control you as we look into the text we would realize that the circumstances surrounding Cain's anger was centered around worship in verse 2 of chapter 4 um, it says later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel, listen to this, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, in, in the process of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And that phrase, that sentence, Offering as an offering to the Lord is used in reference to worship or worshiping God. Offerings was made in worship to Jehovah God. And there are some other terms, there are some other words that we need to keep in mind that is connected to worship that are used interchangeably or that are used mm -hmm. in a wholesome way. In verse 26 of chapter 4, Seth also had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So calling on the name of the Lord is another expression of worship to God. It's another expression just as offering, presenting an offering unto the Lord. In chapter 8 and verse 20, we find that Noah built an altar to the Lord it's another expression, an altar to the Lord. Taking some of all the clean animals 
and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offering on them. Well, that is worship. He worshiped God. All right. He offered burnt offering in worship to Jehovah God. And so it's important that we understand the context in which this murder took place. In chapter 12 of Genesis and verse 13, we find chapter, chapter 12 and verse 8, sorry, the latter part of verse 8 is talking about Abraham. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So both the altar and calling on the name of the Lord is used together in worship to Jehovah God. Chapter 13 and verse 18, again Abraham, he moved his tent and went to live near the great tree of memory at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. I want you to understand that both brothers, Cain and Abel, brought offerings from their livelihood in worship unto Jehovah. One was accepted and one was rejected. And we need to, to make the case for what was taking place was worship. In Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, here is a chapter where Abraham was tested. God told him to take his son, his only son, the son in whom he loved, and offer him as a sacrifice unto him. And I want you to see something that Abraham took his servant and the, the fire and the wood and his son. And as they were going up to the mountain chosen by God, the young man, his son, asks a question. He says, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is the sacrifice he could have used? And Abraham replied, the Lord, will the Lord himself will provide a lamb. And so, that's the first thing I want you to, to understand. The background was that Cain, upon being rejected by God, he got angry. But before he was angry, there had to be some jealousy in him towards his brother. Because his brother's sacrifice was accepted. And his was rejected. And, I, and it's important that we take note it's important that we take note at the two offerings. Abel's offering is said to be, Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. And that is telling us Abel brought the best of the best unto the Lord. Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering. He just brought some of the fruits. There is no indication that it was the best of the best. It was the first. And God required the first. Now, there are some added information concerning this offering. 
and one of them is found in Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 4, it gives us some insight. It says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift. So the offering is referred to as a gift, and it's a gift unto Jehovah God. And it was pleasing to God. It was accepted by God. But the scripture tells us he offered it by faith. And what does that tell us? It tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. It means that at some point in time, God instructed, God told Cain and Abel what to present and how to present it to him in worship. And Cain did not follow the instructions. He did not obey, but Abel did. Again, I want you to see that there, there is information in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. The scripture tells us, Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Listen to what the scripture says. Because his works were evil, and his brothers righteous. So again, this is added information concerning the offerings. It's in direct reference to the offerings. Abel's works were righteous. In other words, he did that which was right in the sight of God based upon the instruction, the command given by God. And Cain failed to do that. So, what do we have here? We have as a background, worship being under consideration, and we have acceptable worship and unacceptable worship before us. Some people don't believe in that. Some people believe that you can, you can worship God as you please. Anything that you want to do, you just do it. But the scriptures will not support that. Excuse. None of the dispensations we would find where persons was worshiping God as they choose and God accepting it. But in each dispensation, we will find God alluding to, implying there is examples where God says, do this this way, and I will accept it. And so we just read a couple of passages that dealt with burnt offerings, offering made by fire unto Jehovah God. And he will ac accept it. Now bear in mind that if you were to violate, as in the Cain, as in the story of of Eli's two sons. They offered up strange fire unto God, and fire came down from heaven and consumed them. So everything must be in accordance to what he has instructed. Again, I want to come back to thee. If you were to tell someone concerning their worship that it is not in harmony, it's not in, in accordance to this, what the scripture says, they will get angry. They will get mad. Just like Cain did. But the Bible tells us God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit 
spirit and in true. Thy word is true. So in order to worship God in truth, we must worship him in accordance to his word, what he says. And so we find an example in Acts chapter 17 and verse 23. Paul came to Athens and there he found worshippers Worshipping all sorts of things. I mean, in Athens, it was a crazy setting. And I want to read to you Acts 17 and here we find Then Paul stood up in the midst, verse 22, of the Apogos and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very superstitious or religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing or the King James have ignorantly, him I proclaim to you. So we find in this example, Paul was passing through a particular place and he noticed that they had images. Images to represent gods. All kinds of gods. And we would call that idolatry because there is only one true God. And so Paul says, the God whom you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, made known unto you. Acceptable worship. There is something called acceptable worship today. And if you would examine the New Testament, because we are in the time of Christ, under the New Testament, under Christ, if you would examine how Christians worship, and there is a good example found in Acts chapter 2, when the first gospel message was preached, we find some of the, the things, the aspects of worship, as one would call it. In Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 42, and I just call out some of the things that are mentioned here. Doctrine or teaching. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. In breaking of bread. That's a second aspect of worship. Breaking of bread is referred to as the Lord's Supper or the communion. And in prayers. So we have teaching, we have breaking of bread, we have prayers. That's three out of the five aspects of New Testament worship. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Singing is a fourth aspect of worship. And we find that singing with, with all the accompaniment of instruments. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Making melodies in your heart unto God. And giving. They give. The Bible tells us. To everyone that had need. The collection for the saints. Now concerning the collection for the saints. I've, I've given order to the churches of Galatia. Even so do ye. So there are five aspects in New Testament worship. And these aspects can be verified 
in the New Testament by example, approved examples, through the teachings of the apostles, we, can, we will see how the New Testament church worship and what they did. And so, that's the first thing I want you to take note of. The second thing I want you to take note of in the text, Genesis chapter 4, is God's warning to Cain. The Bible says, But Cain and his offering, verse 5, he did not show with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. You know, my question is the same as the Lord. But he asks the question in verse, he asks two questions, and he made some comments. He said to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your face downcast? Now my question to you is, was, who was Cain angry with? So, that's the question we need to ask. I believe he was angry with God. But he took it out on his brother. Now, let's see if we can address. God said, if you do what is right. That's important. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Inferring that he did not do what is right. And so that's, that's very important. Now, let's get to the title. Control it. Or it will control you. He's talking about sin. And again, I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV. So, he says, Sin is crouching at your door, verse 7, the latter part. It desires to have you. The it is sin. But you must master it. Still referring to sin. And so, my first question would be how does one master sin but before i deal with that i want you to see how sin once it grab holds of someone how quickly it spread and how quickly it engulfs and takes over beginning with this example Cain. Jealousy led to anger. Anger led to murder. Murder led to lying. Where is thy brother? I don't know. Am I my, am I my brother's keeper? He lied. And it quickly sinned to control over him. When he was warned, when he was encouraged to do what was right. Foolishness is bound up in the heart, in the mind. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, Genesis 6, when God looked down at that point in time and saw that the imagination of mankind was wicked continually. And he repented that he had made man and he wanted to destroy all mankind. He found favor with one person. It was Noah. Again, we look to the book of of Romans. The Bible said, by, through one man, sin entered the world. God. 
And death spread because of sin. There is a rapid spread. Once sin gets a, a hold of you, it takes control over you. In the book of James, James chapter 4, James asks a very important question to the brethren. And he asks the question, verse chapter, James 4 and verse 1, Where do wars and fighting come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure? That wars in your members, it comes from within. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. But where does it originate? Where does it come from? It comes from within. Jesus said, it is not that which goes in that defiles a man, but it's that which comes out that defiles him. For from within comes out all of the evil things, lying and, and, and hatred and envy and jealousy and um, you name it. It's formulated from within. So that is what I'm talking about when I said or it will control you. How do, we, how, how do we master it? How do we control it? Well, by practicing what is right. Exactly what he said. By hiding God's word in our heart, Psalms 119 and verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. By obeying the gospel. By making a change, having faith in Jesus Christ, repenting of our sins, confessing Jesus as Lord and being immersed in water for the remission of our sins. That is how we take control over it, over sin. And so I hope that this lesson would have been a blessing to you. With all of the crime that is taking place these days in our society, I'm saying to the believer and the non-believer, Control it, or it will control you. Until the next time, I bid you Godspeed.